study my name's d this is my wife millie so if you like what you see subscribe and hit the notification bell and if you wish to reach out to us you can email us at devoted to ya at gmail.com All right, so that was verses one to three, kind of went into, right? Being hungry, they're complaining about being hungry, uh, but let's go to verse four. Four so, or five, and that's actually four. Five. So it says, then Yahuwah said to Moses, behold, I am about, Yahuwah says to Moses, behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, okay? Right off the bat, it's saying, the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day that I may test them wherever, uh, whether they will walk in my law or not. Mm -hmm. And I think I felt like you read that earlier mm -hmm. on the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's it. All right, so I want to get into this aspect of we're to be tested once we take on the bread of life. Um, tested, tried, refined, and pruned. So I just want to go through just a, a handful of verses. In Deuteronomy 8, 2, it says, And you shall remember that Yahuwah your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you, test you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. I don't believe that Yahuwah is ignorant or unknowledgeable of our response or what we're going to do in the future. And what I mean by that is I believe that this testing is more so we can see our own hearts. So as he's putting these tests, he already knows if we're going to fail or not. He already knows whether we're going to go. In his, in his, he's, he's, not, he's not caught off guard by our responses. But we need to take this test that he gives us. It's an opportunity to look at where are we. We need to... to um, to always look and be very self, uh, how do you say, uh, introspective, introspective when he winds up giving us these tests so that we can know what is he looking for, whether or not we will walk in his commandments or not. That, that, that's, that's, the, the, that's the barometer in which we're, we're tested by. Deuteronomy 8, 11 to 18. It says, beware that you do not forget, which your forefathers did, that you do not forget Yahuwah your God by not committing keeping, excuse me, keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes, which I command you today, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them, and when your herds and your flocks multiply, and your silver and your gold are multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, when your heart is lifted up and you forget your holy God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, in which were fiery uh, serpents and scorpions and thirsty land where there was no water, who brought water for you out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, with your, which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you, that he might test you, to do you good in the end. His desire, Yahuwah's desire is not to, to do harm to us. At the end, he is a loving father who chastises those whom he loves. That, that's what he does. And a good parent will test their child in the things that they're supposed to be learning. Yahuwah's giving us commands. He's going to test us in those areas to make sure that we're actually writing it on our heart. It can't just be something that we speak with our, our mouth but has no grounded within our heart. Uh, then you say in your heart, my power and my power and the might of my hand have gained me this wealth. And you shall remember Yahuwah your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. Um, 
within the time, we'd like to bring it to, you know, to us. Obviously, we're not the ones that went through the wilderness 40 days and, uh, excuse me, 40 years and such, but we have our own experiences, right? Um, we're human. We, we go through life. We cannot ever get to a place where we become haughty. We should never get to a place where, you know, we've asked for things and he's given it, especially when he, when he gives it, he gives us roof, you know, roof overhead, food and, and extra things. Um, and get to a place where we begin to push you away and forget that all that we have comes from him. Uh, so we have to constantly uh, stay in a place of humility before him. And the last person I wanted to go on over was First Peter 1, uh, the, excuse me, First Peter chapter 1, verses 6 to 10. It says, in this you greatly rejoice, Though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of who? Yahushua, the Messiah, whom having not seen you, love. Though now you do not see him yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Of this salvation, the prophets have inquired and searched carefully, who prophesied of the grace that would come to you. Within this, uh, my, main, my main point in, in sharing all this is we have to be able to take um, this history, the, the scriptures of our forefathers, and not repeat history. We need to learn from the mistakes of our forefathers, the grumbling, the complaining, the, the, the testing Yeshua. And instead of them being able to see that it was supposed to be purging them, instead of them, you know, having the eyes to see that it was like fire refining them so that they can literally be stripped off. I mean, our people were hundreds, hundreds of years in Egypt and being enslaved. And now, that becomes your culture. Although you're enslaved, you're slaves in this culture. And Yuhua literally has to cleanse us. He literally has to burn off that 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 dross. He has to to, to burn off all that, that garbage in, in essence. And um, we have to recognize that he does it for our good. That that needs to ground us. Again, the, the word ground us, it needs to ground us in our faith when those tests and the trials come and we become hungry. We need to say, what are we hungering after? And it needs to be Yahuwah. It needs to be Yahusha. It has to be his word. We have to get to a point where we say, you know what? If this is all that I have, this is all that I need. And you, and then be able to bring, you know what, Yahuwah, you know what? I, I, I need this, this, and this, and this. But not, again, in a complaining, grumbling manner. Because Yahuwah already knows what we need. He, if he's able to clothe the lily of the valleys, if he's able to, to, to feed the birds, uh, of the sky and give them shelter how much more his children and uh so this you know we have to take these examples and really just examine our own faith i guess that's the call i'm making is for all of us to examine our faith where we're at and if we're really grounded especially when trials come especially when we're walking in the wilderness and we're not on the, the you know the, uh, mountaintop. the mountain top but we're in the valley low we really need to say am i like you know, like Job, Job, and clinging onto you, I will not curse him. I will not test him. I will not tempt my God, but he will get me through. You said Job? Yeah, Job, yeah. Yeah, Job was one of the good guys that followed through with what he, what he said. Don't be like Peter. He was like, I'll never denounce you, Yahusha. I'll never, I'll never speak against you. And sure enough, he denied Yahusha three times before the rooster crowed. Mm -hmm. And, um, but kind of it's true. You know, I can imagine being in a congregation, all the scriptures my wife went through, which is fantastic. And just hearing the, hearing everyone in the in the assembly, hallelujah, amen. Like, yeah, let me hear you say amen when that test comes. Because mm -hmm. that's what this is all for. All this preaching right now and sharing and these encouraging words is to prep you for that moment, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but uh, I hope you guys are blessed by that. Mm -hmm. I think we'll end there. I don't know if we need to read. I don't know if we need to read anymore or if we could just, if that, like everything that you spoke about kind of 
It's summed up in there mostly. It's summed up in there mostly. Mm -hmm. um, now we can keep going a little bit. There's a little bit more grumbling that happens. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just finish the reading because it goes along with everything you taught. So mm -hmm. I'm not gonna teach anymore. Um, so it says that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. Mm -hmm. So this is you know part of Yahoo's heart, right? He wants to know if we're gonna walk in his law. So that doesn't jive very well for many Christians who think the law of Moses has been abolished. But verse five says, on the sixth day, when they prepare, when, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, at evening you shall know that it was Yahuwah who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of Yahuwah because he has heard your grumbling against Yahuwah. For what are we that you grumble against us, Moses says to the Israelites. And Moses said, when Yahuwah gives you in the evening meat to eat and in the morning bread to the full, because Yahuwah has heard your grumbling, look how gracious and merciful Yahuwah is, that you grumble against him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against Yahuwah. So on that, I think we'll end there. And uh, we'll continue the next portion uh, next week. Mm -hmm. Shalom.